experience to me. So, I mean, look, it's, I think, just the intensity of the moment for both teams. Once again, I think Des does a great job putting what's what's at stake for both of these teams, what's on the line, because this is going to be an extremely, extremely depressing evening for six of these people. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I really, I don't know what to say either. I feel like Astralis have a lot of uh, capability to, to, you know, to make this a tragedy for themselves as well. So I, I really don't you can know. Make that, that's, that's the tough part is you could make that argument on both sides. Like both these teams seem to have like a consistent way of, of letting themselves down. And also, I mean, even if you want to talk about the players on an individual level, the underperformances of Config, not able to find his rhythm, not able to find consistency, the underperformance of Searson, not able to find his rhythm, not able to find his consistency. I mean, there's, there's like a mirror of disappointment on both sides. And right out of the gates, it's fast into the upper bomb site. Astralis trying to take the bull by the horns. And the bull's fighting back until Blame F comes in. Searson falls inside the site. It's Keto and taps in verse three. Oh, and Keto, he wants to get through and help. That's a huge fight if he wins it. And he will, at least for the start here. Finds the headshot on Blame F. The bomb is freshly planted. He's not really sure where Config is hiding in the corner by that vent. Oh. can't see him oh. out of the corner of his screen. Oh, dear. Config, though, with a triple to start the pistol round with an Astralis, some of the smile about it at the very least. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. Get some energy going, a little upper rush right out of the gates and big, maybe a little bit cold, not expecting it. Take a loss in the pistol round, it's one to nothing. A tough start for Krimbo Searson though. I mean, this is a great double and he gets a shot to reload. So yeah. a lot going on there. And Keto, you know, credit to him for for realizing you have to push with that smoke. You can't wait in the lobby. That was a very bold play, wasn't it? Yeah, and he gets rewarded with a nice kill against Glaive. Searson's outside with a scout. He's going to be looking to... Ooh, and he finds it. That's filthy. That's a nasty way to start things in round number two. Good headshot through the smoke. Glaive has no idea what hit him. You know, I'll say this, though, Jason. All right. I was waiting all day yesterday for Searson to show up, and we had maybe, maybe one or two rounds that I would consider real Searson... Yeah level rounds so i'm it's been a long time i feel like that would that would put them over the edge that could make the difference i don't think i'm not sure if i don't think Farley can stand up to citizen if he's going to be hitting his a game no but i also don't think he has to i mean because the question would come down to the performance of someone like config performance like someone like you know blame f who's obviously been incredible through the struggles and there's other players on the Astral side who can pick up those pieces, but certainly Big are going to need Searson in this matchup. Krimbo not able to fall back, not able to find safety, pulls them into Tapsin, who gets one. Zipix falls with the MAC-10. Config hears the vent drop. Now, he has the bomb. He's got to be careful, and there it is. It hits the deck. Super scary. Keto is low on health, though. Searson's still doing fine with the scout running around somewhere. Gonna make sure that no one could come through. Ooh, he misses the chance, though. There's a little bit of damage, but he's gonna be very careful. If he dies, it's on Kido, who is almost dead. 25 seconds, by the way, in the clock. So Astralis, they can't wait around forever like this. Eventually, they're gonna have to go and find somebody here and pick up the bomb and run for it. And yes, yeah, Sis, and he's awkwardly isolated at the moment. This is really tricky for him. He opens the door, tries to go for the no-scope. Shocked that he didn't die right away. Nine seconds on the time? clock. I don't, I don't think they do. No, no this is they over. Are out of time. No. This is a horrible way to play a second round. Keto, by staying alive, going to be able to win the round. And a little bit of shouting. I like it. Maybe a little bit too much respects in that two-on-two -two for the scout for the 5-7 yep. that had done so much work. But, I, you know, for some reason, the communication at the time was running down so very low, just never clicked in. I, I mean, you got to say, I guess, good job from Searson. Like, at the end of it, I think, with 20 seconds on the clock, he just bailed out of the fight. He's like, I'm just going to play the delay game. Config, obviously, going through control side windows and Searson going right beneath him. Just found the perfect path. So we're all tied up awkwardly at one. Huge win for big right off the bat though they're gonna be happy about it now they just need to hold on to it which um they should be able to give in the firepower but you never know there is an ak on blame f as well on that t side so it could get interesting Sisson missing a couple of shots out here probably more than uh, you would expect so he's gonna start to back on out doesn't want to stick around for that one and there's some it's questionably out control for, for Astralis, but at least they have some presence here, at least. Ooh. And keep fighting. All right. Config will find him. Sixth kill of the game for him so far. Tapson, though, lining them up in the ramp room. Zip and Blame will both go down. I really like the attitude on Config to even take that kind of a fight. Finds a follow-up headshot. 
Varlig had no idea Krimbo was going to be on the ramp. He was looking the other direction, but Config's on a bit of a tear. Two kills with the Deagle, two headshots, and oh, he's going to fall to the FAMAS. They needed that kill to keep this round within strike, or keep it within reach. Keto's going to flank up behind Glaive. He'll get the kill with ease. Config really one of these players that, I don't know, at one point, with no question, seemed like one of the most gifted, gifted riflers we've seen in a in a long, long time. Yeah. And the, you keep having that question in the back of your mind. You know, could, could he get back there again? Is, is that going to happen? Could, you know, how has it been too long since we saw that? Or yeah, th I mean, especially with today's today's age of Counter Strike, like a lot of the teams that have been shooting up the rankings have gone down and found the younger next gen yeah. talents. Like, and even even the veteran teams have had to go down and find those younger talents to kind of bring them up to date on on the meta of how the game is being played in terms of individual meta, in terms of team meta as well. A lot of these teams that are sticking with the old timers and the veterans and not refreshing any of their ranks are having a difficult time with it. Searson getting tagged up, awkward situation, way to manage the pressure. But it also just feels like even the sort of average player on some of these top teams is still, that everyone is so good right now at, take, at taking fights. It's just so hard to to be this aim-heavy person because the, the gap is just seems like it's kind of closing down yeah. way more than ever it ever was. I was watching that last game uh, when Order were playing and you see you know, even in a even in a pretty rough game, you see some of the fights that are coming out from you know from names that might be really further down the list from you know the phases and the navis and all the rest of it, and they're still they're still you know, still they, shooting headshots. Head, and the, and the fights are like, like everything about it is so quick. There's no margin really anymore. Um, it seems like that's really something that's happened within the last couple of years. It's just it's going quick right now. So to stay as someone like Config from the past. The amount of work is insane. Ooh. Here we go. Speaking of winch, that's Searson taking a kill, and not just any kill. Config, who is 8 and 4, so taking him out of the round has got to feel amazing. All right, Tizian up top. I don't think Astralis is going to try and do anything, or Farlick is going to do anything too crazy out of the hut. Searson outside. Sees nothing as Glaive has fallen back as well, and Astralis is readjusting on the map. Giving up any presence in Yard with the loss of Config. They don't want to mess with the op. Almost looks like they want to line up for an upper bombsite hit. Four on five. But everyone from Astralis waiting for a mistake, waiting for a gift to be given over. Yeah, which is something that definitely Big should be able to control. I mean, they had a real a couple of experiences that yesterday playing Outsiders, which, uh, which was very difficult, very tough on Big, obviously. Yeah. Outsiders played a great game. They would have been tough for anyone to handle. So back to the yard we go. Late smoke walls put up. Good utility. Those smokes are going to expire. They've been out for quite some time. Let's walk across. Big gap that they can see over. Taps and almost loses his life. He comes back for the fight. Finds Farlig. And now the smoke's definitely fading. Zipix can't make it across. Glaive has to come back for the bomb. And it's all gone horribly wrong. They didn't really have the timer nailed down on the smoke wall. Blimf lurks behind and... Finds Keto, but what more can you do? It's a 1v5. Time to save the weapon. Yeah, maybe another mistake if Tapson comes back out. Maybe he could find that kill too, but that is about the end of it. So that's an uncharacteristic mistake from Astralis. Don't, don't really expect to see that. Two uncharacteristic mistakes from Astralis in the first five rounds of this game. Yeah, you're they right. Go back to second round with the time running out. This one here as well, letting the smokes fade before they can really get involved in the action. Now, Big did a good job of chucking out some flashbangs, making it awkward, but oh boy, oh boy. The fact that the bomb drops out there, just uh, you know, even if if it's just one kill, but when the bomb is down like that, you have to go back out after the smokes have already gone away. And I guess the other, the other less than uh, exciting prospect for Astralis is the fact that early on in this game, Keto, who was missing yesterday against Outsiders, who had very good tournaments online leading into this event, nine and two, he's got a good start. Searson hasn't really had any kind of a crazy round, but he's hit a couple decent shots. And even, I think, even more importantly, he's been a little bit aggressive. He's, yeah. he's actually he's actually in the game. Yeah. Because that's, that's another version of Searson that exists sometimes, is the one that sort of falls really far back. And he doesn't maybe die a lot. He doesn't get a lot of kills. Yeah, but you, need that, you need that all position, that all player, yeah. to really dictate a couple things here and there, have some impact, make, it, make a game-changing play, a round-changing play. He wasn't, you're right, he wasn't doing that very much at all yesterday. Today he got started with it early. Doubled up in ramp room against the low buy. 
Searson outside with the AWP against the low buy, and Kribo's going to start pushing forward, but those pistols are going to come right in his position if he waits. I mean, if you jump first and the AK goes in second, there's something to work for. They, they get the jump, but Kribo's just not interested, not really going to fall to that. The idea is there at any rate, but it feels like the spacing might have been a slight bit off. Searson going to be catching Glaive. Okay, he saw a little gap under that. wasn't just a random shot like the scout kill was before. Config's going to go down as well. Flawless round. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, this is a, a very nice start out of the big squad. Tizian searching for a fist bump. Searching high and low. Yeah. He got one eventually. Yeah, this is sick from Krimbo. Yeah. That transfer over to Blame F as well. Yeah, he almost walked into that shot, so. Look at the money now on Big as well. Zero kills on Sip, zero kills on Glaive. Going into round number seven. Glaive had some good words as well in that little video talking about his main driving force is being able to prove that he can win with a different lineup. Yeah, and acknowledging that it would take take a lot to uh, to try and bring this whole team back the way that it should be playing. Ooh, look at this ramp aggression. Tapson's gonna get challenged first. Glaive always got barrel shown. There's the pre-fire. Glaive's head is the victim. Config just tapping away at the corner. No one's gonna follow that up. But Searson's gonna try and pull them into the M4 that's at hand as Astralis tries to connect the dots through secret and ramp room. Yeah, this is a great setup if, uh, if anyone wants to go for it. Well, because of that kill, ironically, on a Glaive, Astralis actually changes their plan. Back to lobby we go. Perhaps Config can lurk down here in secret. Perhaps he can pop up the vents, but first, he needs a kill. First, he needs to get out of this danger. Nade in his face. Two players to deal with. That flashbang did not go where he wanted it to. Good shot, but it might not matter. No, it might not. Krimbo's already out for the hunt. They have time this round, but they're about to get stabbed in the back and they don't even realize it. Sip, no chance on that one. They're gonna get a grenade kill actually after he was there. That's interesting. Falling quick back down the vent to try and see if they go for it. But Keto is down here and waiting and he's gonna be able to call it in. He must already be on the radio. Galil will get the one kill and almost pre-fired. That one is a good defense for Keto nonetheless. Finally, in a one versus two now. The bomb just plants it, but he can't escape this corner. He's gonna take down Sirson anyway, but Krimbo's right on top and I don't think Farley knows. He has no idea. And it'll be big to pick up another round, although it was a close one. Yeah, nice attempt from far. Like, there's no way he ever could have known that Krimbo was just walking directly above him. But again, Estrella shut down. This is their map pick, this opening map of the series at the ESL Cologne Plains. Astralis picking Nuke, starting on the T side. Down six to one early, but Farleg almost with a 1v3. Yeah, if you would have heard some steps earlier or any, One piece any of information, yeah. yeah. Could have made all the difference in the world. Timeout called by Astralis, as you'd expect. Five round deficit, they've got money to play with. Glaive's already picked up an AK-47. Got B there, having a conversation. Got B and Tapson uh, extremely vocal within the big team and saw that interview from Tapson as well about how him and Got B share the same philosophy, share the same ideas about the game, about the team. Very good connection between those two players. You know, it's it's funny, it, it kind of, it always goes under the radar a little bit. I don't know if you could name a player that's more important to their organization than Tapson is for big, I feel. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, I, th I think that's definitely true. And again, his, his career within Counter-Strike as a whole, but specifically within German Counter-Strike is, is super interesting. Yeah. Be worth doing a real piece on just the, the sacrifice that he's made to try and... Build up a regional team and a regional brand and a regional organization. Yeah. yeah, it's been super admirable of him. Again, as we mentioned in the past, in a region that has a tremendous history with Counter-Strike as a whole going right. you know, back 20 some years, so um, it's worth really thinking about. Well, they almost did it again. Ships in the night. <laughs> they just managed to slowly glide past Config, though. Careful about the timing here. But they've got some, a little bit. I mean, the Glaive down below, he's trying to do what he did last time when he ran into Tabson. This time, Tab's not there to be found immediately. So we'll see if they can find something. A missed shot from Searson, and it nearly cost him his life as Blamef will open up the round with a headshot to take down Keto. Krimbo, though, on a tear, and he'll find the bomb. The rest of them coming in through Mini. There's nothing they could do right here. Great t double for Tizian, but 
Yet all of their attention is going to be on that lobby where the bomb is down all of a sudden. Sip now, one versus two. He's got 40 seconds, but how do you retake this one? This is outstanding from Big. What a double kill from Tizzy and just chilling all the attention out towards lobby. Straws might have just assumed that the upper defense was, was part of the lobby crunch. This is, we mentioned some of the Astralis players that could step up. Having a big 1v2 clutch at the moment for Zipix would be outstanding. But again, no information, no knowledge that Krimbo's coming around the corner. What a push from Krimbo through ramp room. He's also starting out with a hot hand in this game. What, 10 and 2 now? Keto's up to 10 and 4. Those lobby pushes, whether they come from Squeak Door or Hut or this time from the ramp room, it's so hard to hold rank because the majority of the Astralis forces come in the way in through mini, which is, I think, actually, think it would have been, I would love to have seen that from Astralis. It would have been an interesting push had they not been stabbed in the bag in the lobby to begin with, but it's so difficult to hold. Yeah, I mean, a good read from Blame F as well. After his kill into the upper bombs, that he even turns ready for the radio push, just couldn't beat Krimbo. Upper hit. Upper set piece coming out from Astralis, and Keto's just used all his ammunition. He's in trouble. Tabson and Tizian going to hold him at bay for the moment, and actually, there is no strength behind that hit. They just send Glaive to his death. Yeah, throw him in there. He's 0-9 right now, Krimbo. He's got some backup. Tizian showing up. He was just in heaven, but that's kind of the geography of the map. You can get here pretty quickly. And they close that round. They shut it down. 8-1. to one. Big are uh, taking I'm some massive steps in the right direction, at least on the opening map. And Astralis have yet to wake up. Yeah, I mean, even even their plans are getting stopped. They're having to go to plan B early on in rounds. They like their game plan isn't even being executed quite yet. So this is very worrying, I think, at this point at eight to one for Astralis, especially with the eye test the way it's looked. Krimbo at thirteen to two. Yeah. So he's having himself a game and a half. I know. I don't want a little analyst who's going to be excited. Just one. Just one. He's not so little either, but he's kind of little. <laughs> well, Maui Snake's been uh, been talking about Big for a while. Yeah. Probably yeah. maybe getting a little bit ahead of himself at times. <laughs> the enthusiasm catching, you know. But we all we know what that's like. It's okay as long as you're right at the end of the day. That's you know? exactly right. Sometimes it just takes a little bit longer than you expect. You can always claim you just saw it coming before everybody else. Yeah, I, that's just how clairvoyant I was. That's how, how deep I understand the game, is that I was ahead of the field by like six months. Yeah. Ooh, Tearson tags him. Probably upset he didn't actually close out the kill. Yeah, but the information. Yeah. He, he, he knows that no one else is coming. You can see that deep, deep smoke. Didn't see anyone else out front. They're running through the fire to try and get in through Squeak, but they're not going to be allowed. Tizian and Keto each with a kill on the defense. And Astralis, again, sort of sent away from the A-bomb side. So you're not welcome here. Krimbo ready to receive and add to the scoreline. It's another triple spray down for him. Wow, this is so ridiculous. 16 and 2 now on Krimbo with 146 ADR and another timeout called by Astralis. So you can understand they're not getting anything they wanted. Just look at the entry. Like look at the look at the fight Blame F had coming out of door. Probably the strongest performing player for Astralis, or definitely the strongest performing player for Astralis over the past few months. And he's trying to find an entry kill outdoor with a smoke pluming in his face, running through a Molotov, half blind over towards Venn, and that's that's the guy who's supposed to open the round up. Big's doing a great job with their utility at the moment, and Astralis not able to find anything clean. Call him Crimebo, because what he's doing to uh, Astralis should be illegal, Jason. But it's not. I'm not even touching that one. <laughs> that doesn't even deserve a response. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, timeouts being called, but I mean, at a, at a very fundamental level, the production on the Astralis side in terms of kills, apart from Config, who's who's rocking in at 10 kills, that's yeah. great, 10 kills in 10 rounds, we can accept that, but they need a lot more than that right now. They just need some some of their team members here to start to wake up and, you know, get a, get a kill or two per round here, try to see if they can, especially the entry kills, make it a four and five. It's all real basic stuff, but if you can't do it, then whatever plans you have, whatever the strategy of it, it's going to be so much harder to execute. This one, a lot of speed behind, and there's Sip picking up a kill on Tapsa. That's a great start. They got Tizian in an awkward fight. Could not really get back up, and they've got some weapons now that they can steal, and they don't even have to move. They can wait. Yeah, they can, but they also got to start thinking about where they want to go from here, because you've been at least still slowed down and stalled out at the vents. You have to feel like there's going to be at least one player here mounting defense. There's actually two. And a third one right, not that far away. Kind of moving away now, Sis, over by the ramp, but really 
they almost had three players here. A minute well, on the clock, though. The path that Astralis can take to get into the upper bomb site just through vents seems to be the cleanest one, but they have no idea where that third player is, and they obviously have no idea there's two people down here. Even if Krimbo just goes one for one, the second player in this bomb site can be so dead. Oh, he's dead. Never mind. Krimbo, it's all on you, dog. Yeah, they found him. That's not bad. 40 seconds. Krimbo, as you said, fight that he has to take basically against three or four people on his own. Searson rocking down, and that's a quick scope to take down Config. Could he do it? This would be a truly heartbreaking moment. And they have some money in the bank. If he really wants to throw away the AWP, he could try for it. Lining up what looks like a wall bank, which you can do, but no one's on the other side to receive, and maybe yeah, that's his cue to leave. So Fair play, second round on the board for Astralis after an incredible struggle. Yeah, and this this is them like maybe the least complicated round we've seen them try and pull off as well. It's just like Tech 9, cross the smoke wall outside, get the frags downstairs. Good on Astralis, but they got to build on top of it. Yeah, they really have to. They, I mean, almost feels like at times this, these these are the kind of rounds that are really important now where you, you do just a tiny bit and it, it, you know sometimes you can start a momentum build very late in a half yeah. and still kind of come out all right i mean let's just say astronauts get to nine six they're probably gonna be like all right slow start but we're in it um but if it goes back the other way right away and big just keep on rolling here then yeah it's there's not going to be much of a map left to be played at that point in time exactly 17 and 3 for Krimbo. it's so stupid it's 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 awesome for i mean if you're big you got to be very very pleased about yeah. that and also i mean it's it's mentioning uh, these guys have been touting Krimbo for, for a little bit of time searson with the run boost quickly on on top of the roof he's going to be out of the action tapson is outside as well they might both be locked out of the fight for the upper bomb site no molotov on top of hunt means keto gets to chill two frags straight down nothing uncomfortable for him blame f is out at the vent he gets destroyed Keto's got a third, and this hit goes absolutely nowhere. They had two layered flashbangs coming into the ceiling windows. I don't think any of, I think he turned for one of them, but even the other one when he was taking the fight, I'm not even sure did anything. So I'd be curious to go back and research where are those flashbangs landing? For them yeah, not where, they, where are they popping? Yeah, because I agree, obviously, the Molotov is the real way to get rid of someone on that hut, but a flashbang at least could make his fight slightly more difficult, and didn't seem like it did. And if you combine them together, the Molotov and the Flashbang, it'd be really nice. You've got something cooking. Yeah. Some real chemistry there. Keto looking for the ace. Shut down. More light. More increased oxidation. Some, some chemistry stuff going on there. OK. Maybe the Molotov burns a little bit harder. I don't know. Sure. Um, Farley with a little bit of health. No way out of this round without a mistake from Big especially given the health and the time that's left here. Nobody down below just yet, but not that far away. Tabson is over at the ramp room, so it's not like they can't pull anyone down. Oh, okay. no! Flying over, kick open the door and going straight for the bomb plant. That makes that makes Farleg's position so much more powerful. If he can actually stop a rotation down the vent, now they probably think that Farleg is holding inside the vents, which is why they're avoiding rotating in that direction altogether. So now Farleg is going to have to make a choice because Zip's only got 24 HP. Farleg's going to have to find a way to get involved in the action right now. And they have a smoke on Searson, so if, if they take down Sip, oh, he's in it. You're right, he had to make a move, and he did. He misses the spray. It's actually close to being a retake, or close to being around there for Astralis. They maybe could have done it, but they needed to win one of those two fights right there, and it didn't work out that way. So 10 to 2, and big make their way back. But this, if this had been the kind of round that we've been playing all along, where you'd say, oh, it's a 2 on 2, kind of close, maybe could have worked out, then this would feel different even. But it's just that some of these rounds for Big have been so convincing that yeah. we haven't seen many rounds even like this one. Uh, I mean, the, the hardest part for me is just is, is that the just the initial idea of that upper upper hit just had no no real strength, no real danger to it. I mean, it's yeah. great to get into a two and two at the end of the day, but imagine if you if you didn't lose three players for nothing to open up the round. That would be something. That'd be cool. Do you think Glaive is going to kill anyone in this half? Uh, I, he'll get one. Giving him one. I'm giving him one. You're generous. Yeah. Generous. I have, a, today, I have a benevolent god. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> yeah. This is. Uh, it's not the experience that I think many people were expecting. I don't know if I said it. I, I probably would have picked Astronus to win this one overall from the start, if I'm being honest. But, yeah, um, that's nice of you. <laughs> rare thing, like, <laughs> I know, but try sometimes. Not trying to play the prediction game. Yeah, I, 
this is this is pretty shocking for me. I don't know if it's if it's more shocking that oh, hopeful phone. There's Tapson on the glaive. Farlig is going to hold his fall back. Searson's out here though, and over top of the smoke, Farlig uh, not able to find him. It's Config on top of Twinkie on top of Silo, who's able to shut down the big Auber. Three versus four, and with a lot of time left, so this is where you would want the experience from Astralis to, to kick in and for no mistakes to be made. And yeah, they're all staying more or less grouped up. As long, as bad as it's been, they can still salvage this half. Yeah. They can still, I mean, getting up to four, getting up to five would be excellent, obviously, if they can rattle off these last three, it all starts here. Tough part is they're playing it on hard mode. They've got so much money built up on the big side that there's not gonna be some kind of easy reset to allow Astralis to shoot up and close this gap. But look at what they found here. It, this. If this is a pretty quick bomb plant, silly as it sounds, almost not worth it a bit to fight too much. Finally in position, Krimbo, no chance even walking in up there with the sniper. So it's going to be two versus four. And yet they have a lot of money, but there's no reason to just throw it away in this round, I think. So, okay, nicely done. They get the relevant kills. They slow down the game. They don't make any real mistakes getting into the bomb site, And they get helped a little bit by big preemptively, out of, you know, attempting to defend the B-bomb side, which... A bit of a coin flip for them. Not, I don't even mind that for big, really, that they had no. to, they had to do something. Had around to play with it also. Okay, so third one on the board. That's get, yeah, starting to get there. It's something slow, but at least it's a couple of steps in the right direction. And again, we know that Astral switching sides can be just as suffocating on defense. Big in position to take some of these weapons away right at the end, but no one from Astralis is giving them the opportunity. Nobody's retreating all the way into these crosshairs. So, 10-3, to three, Glaive still with zero kills, but still passing out fist bumps like Halloween candy. I like it. You, uh, you're a Halloween kind of guy, I know. No, I'm not actually. I, I don't care for the holiday myself. Really? I swear. I have some memory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe it's just the pumpkin spice and things. It's probably because we've spent every Halloween together at an event for the past, like, eight years. It should be true. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Well, Tamsin gets blown up. Not entirely, but down to 16 health, so not exactly an ideal start to the round. And Sirson started to play a little bit further back out of the yard again. Doesn't really want to be too forward. Although I was enjoying that. Yeah, here we go. He's mixed Straight it in a couple it. times, which has been great. This time, obviously, passive behind a smoke wall as well, transitioning to the back corner. Perhaps to be able to listen for some information down secret. It's Glaive to challenge after the Molotov clears. He'll head down. No one from Big dedicated to the lower bomb site just yet. You can see Krimbo flirting with the idea through ramp room. But they're not concerned at the moment for secret for lower bomb site. Sirson's saying, well, I'm not seeing anyone there yet, but he has no way to know if, if any or how many walk down below. So that's just, he's going to have to call in a bit of a question mark on that one. Is we can tell, it's Glaive. That's a very good grenade, actually. Frustrating. Krimbo going to start to fall back. Yeah, actually, that that's that's a rough decision. Oh, he's going to come back up. This is so dangerous. This Oh, he's boosted up. Tapson's here. He's ready to go. That's why Krimbo was falling away, and he pounces right back. Combining for a couple more kills, but we're into a two on three, make it on two. Yeah, but only 25 seconds, so a lot of the finesse of this round might have to go right out the window. They just almost have to run for it, and luckily for them, there's nobody downstairs yet, so they could run for it and straight put down the bomb. If they wait too long, though, that's going to get more tricky. Yeah, they had the window, and now it's gone. Ten seconds here, going to be opening up and worried about the potential for it. Searson's walking in, the bomb is being planted inside of the smoke, and he couldn't really see it, but they haven't seen him either. Sirson, with a little bit of trigger discipline, did not want to try and take a shot through there. Let's see if that pays off or not. Now they're out of the bomb site, and there is a smoke on a Molotov still left on Sirson, so he could try and be a bit annoying. Clearing out a corner, that's still a huge value in terms of not having to check that a little bit later on in the retake. Putting up a little bit of a smoke on top and trying to oh, go for the defuse. Yeah, they're already on it, and they don't even realize. Finally goes down, and it'll be big to win another round. I don't think Astralis even knew. No, he was in inside of his own smoke, and he was very far away from the bomb as well. There was no way to even tell that was being defused. What a little sneaky clutch to snatch that one away. 
boosting up over the top. I didn't even see this on the minimap. Good positioning. Waited for him to rotate with that low HP to get boosted up. Now Krimbo to be very, very mobile. Probably felt like he should have had more coming back up to combine for that ramp defense. But just stick of the diffuse inside of the smoke. Straws could do nothing. 15th round. Last of the half. Falik, yep, he spots one out there, and he had the idea for the flick, but taps in at range with the M4A1. It's going to be Config on the other side, and see he that. Yep, he's walking into it. Gun barrel showing, and you're right, the audio from that scope as well. He knew Config back in action. 13th kill for him. Flameth going down towards the ramp. Still, trades continue evenly across the board to make it a three-on-three. -three. Config down below, tapping away. Has the right idea, but Krimbo will drop him. 21 and 5 is Krimbo right oh now. Sip going to be going down and Glaive. One versus three to try and get at least the one kill on the board. And you call it, he's going to get that one at least. Now, could he end the round? If this would be, I mean, everything, maybe not all is forgiven, but it'd be something if we win this one. Tries to go straight for the bomb plant, smoke off on one side, but immediate threat, they've already seen him. Comes back to try and take the fight. Headshot on Tapson. It's a great start. Keto's on the other side, though. Glaive seems to know. Might have heard him. Better be careful eventually. Door is right there, but unopened, so tough break for Keto if he wants to move down that way. He's actually expecting for Glaive to have moved up against him. A little bit of a wild call. He's got the kit, of course, and Glaive, one click, one headshot is all it takes. They might actually get this fourth round. A lot of time already offered, and he goes straight for it, not even faking it, and there it is, a one versus three. The only three kills that Glaive got in the half, but it is for an entire round. Yeah, what a time for it. We're headed to a halftime break. We'll be right back with the conclusion of Nuke in this series. Jeg skal lægge lige ind og så var jeg klar med Shadow Flashes efter. Okay, det bliver lidt delayet, så tror jeg. Hvad gør du nu? Ja, det er fint, det er fint. Okay. Jeg går lige så klar for Forrester. Jeg er klar. Ui. Så Flashes. Flashes du? Flashes jo. Flashes jo. Jeg var bare vand. Jeg ser intet. Intet udenfor, dreng. Jeg pusher. Fanger mig igennem. Overlev, jeg bærer ham. Yes. Overlev. Kom, blok noget. Nice. Jeg har bare ham. Jeg skal have ham. Stå godt. Stå godt. Tjekker den. Et liv. For eksempel. Jeg går hjertet. Jeg rammer ham midt. Jeg rammer ham Push hjerten, Kalle. Kalle pusher hjerten. Han er low, Kalle. Han kommer til at gå ud, Kalle. Sned vent. Det er han. radio. Smukker noget hjerte. Du er ikke smukke på af. Kom med ind her. Jeg gør top ramme her. Kom med under. Jeg står i bamflag under. Jeg kan ikke stikke under det. Nej, det er fint. Bør vende ud af. Så. Loppi. Back loppi. Oh my god, he gets it and gets away. And a no scope from Farley. He denies entrance into the site. Oh, and a no scope into drop. He hits the wall bang. Makes a round out of it now.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second half is coming up here. It's Big versus Astralis. We're on Nuke for the opening map in the best of three. And I've got to say, just an impressive performance from Big in that first half. We'll see if they can end it right here and uh, go on to the second map quickly. Or if Astralis can have a chance to get back into it. Krimbo with an incredible performance. I've got to say, Glaive with a really relatable performance. Reminding me of my school days. Kind of showing up, doing nothing most of the time. And then right at the end, when it's almost, you know, about to be, you know, a real bad time. You do a little bit of work, just to show you can. Yeah, just to get that little, like, uh, the last minute hustle and yeah, the yeah. pressure of not turning in the assignment. Exactly. Before they start calling your parents and all the rest of it. You know, <laughs> you've got to put a little bit sometimes. So. Yeah, it was a brilliant clutch as well. They needed it. They needed that fourth to give them some breathing room. Tapson hasn't been spotted just yet over towards ramp room. There's Blame F. Good peek. Tapson falls. Five on four. And we've already got a defender down lower. Zipix dropped very early. Yeah, he is ready for it. Already spot dropping by. A nice little jump there to hit the ceiling to camp the jump. Tip, a lot of players coming in his way. They're swinging wide against him, and Krimbo will get one in return. They're taking a little bit of damage on CSN in the meantime, and everyone from Astralis has started to show off. So this might be a very difficult even to get the bomb plant here. Glaive with the headshot. Config will take down Searson, and they are running out of players on the big side. Bomb in the middle of the bomb site, unplanted, and it will be a nice and clean round coming out from the Astralis side. Man, that's uh, that's pretty pretty aggressive, pretty uh, optimistic for Big to think that they were just going to be able to plant that bomb out in the open that late into things. I mean, no, no utility was dropped anywhere. There was plenty of rotations for Astralis, and they shut down the plant. Well done from Zipex as well, staying alive as much as possible. They have to chase him through control to take him down. Thinning out the players who could hold off the retake. So 11 to 5. Astralis going to start working on clawing back. Yeah, it almost has You have to assume at that point... Big, we're thinking we're gonna not just take the bomb side, we're gonna get two or three kills along the way, and just when you don't do that, it's it's not as easy. No. Unarmored Glocks for the big side of things. Chance for Config to climb up that scoreboard. Well, he's already at the top, but he can he can he can be more on top. Three kills, a lot of money built up, and Zipix wants the final piece of bonus money. He's gonna get it. Just five rounds away now. And a third round by coming in for Big in the second half. No plant in the first round, but third round they can afford the AKs. Galil dropped down for some utility on Tizian. They're gonna have a very strong bid for round number 18. Curious uh, how well this Astronauts defense will actually be playing, especially if they can get some money behind them. It'd, be it'd certainly be a relief for them if they could start to fight their way back into this game a little bit more than what we've seen so far. From Big's point of view, it's got to be about taking the money away and winning this map before anything really starts to happen on the Astralis side at all. Yeah, you kind of, like, when you have Astralis that was in, like, a, it almost felt like a daze for maybe the first, like, 10, 11 rounds of the first half. You, you, you need to f have that, you know, finishing hit before they wake up and get back into the game, even though it's been tough, even though it's been slow, you know they can rise to the occasion. And if they start waking up now, it's going to get so difficult. We saw yesterday as well against Outsiders, maybe a little bit of stress coming into the big side at different points. Zipix boosted up with the SMG. First kill is his. Second one's going to be tough. Second one's going to be very difficult, but Config arrives. Zipix tucked in, made himself a small target, and that bought time for Config to head over. It's Tizian and Tabson against four. Okay, very mobile defense here for Astralis. They had, at one point, three people outside with two of them near Mini and Farley a little bit further back with the Scout, and then that shifted into being Ooh. pretty heavy defense here towards the ramp room. So they could go anywhere they wanted out in the back line. That's pretty great. Tizian trying to get that pre-fire, but Farnix going to be able to catch him. It's all on Tapson, one versus three. And he, they're not giving him a lot of opportunities right now. Out in the open there, Sip swings for it, and he'll win the fight. So 11 to seven. Yeah, what a great defense. A little bit of laughter there from Blame F and Glaive having a giggle. Four rounds away. Look, well, uh, just as we just kind of said, that's a, that's a fantastic first gun round for the Astralis defense to get on board. So big, could be back to just pistols. They could they could drop down and invest in some deagles and maybe some armor, maybe some utility if they want to try and get a clean fight, but nothing too crazy. Nineteenth round here. Still even with deagles. Astralis have to be just a bit careful. 
Lame if out here. Not a lot of smokes going on, and he's going to be shot in the face by Tamsin. Good kill with the deal. Good find. Blame if busy trying to set up a nade. Finally going to spot one of them out. Unfortunately, that's the bomb as well. Searson's just like, yeah, I can't cross, so have fun down there, Krimbo. Config finds another kill. And Zipix waiting for someone to poke his head towards ramp room. Good shot from Tizian. Gives the location over to his teammate. Krimbo slowly lurking into this well, Actually, not even lurking. Now sprinting. Footsteps are being given up, and Zipix has just got to back away. Molotov is out. He knows he can isolate one fight, and they're still denying Searson access to his teammates. That bomb still just isolated on its own. Convict putting a lot of pressure on that lobby, even if it doesn't immediately get the kill like that, just something for Big to worry about wherever they go. Krimbo, though, finding Glaive, that's a little bit awkward, and he could actually be in trouble here, Config. Better be careful that oh, he doesn't get signed. No. Yeah, he has no idea. Tizian coming back from the ramp, and Searson on the hunt for Sip. He spotted him earlier yep. as well, so he's calling out the information. Zip thinks, oh, this is so brutal. Astral is about to lose this round. Yeah, they are. Maybe time is the only thing that could save them nope. if Big screwed up. That. No, they're right there, out of position. I was going to say that might have been the one of the few ways that they could have got in and found the bomb somehow, but now it's planted instead. And finally against Sib, two versus three. And you have to really think hard about how much you want to go for this. You don't have that much money in the bank either. If you throw these guns away, it's not going to be worth it. They're calling it off. I mean, obviously, there, there's a chance, but obviously don't want to risk the AWP, as you're mentioning, with the economy, but also no information on where anyone could be in the post plant. They weren't even close by. They just got so out positioned. Maybe some unlucky timings in terms of intel. Searson spotting Zipix go down towards secret. Knew the exact plan from there. Knew what the, the exact right call was going to be. So big extend the lead back up to five. It's going to be 12 to seven. They get away with a pair of free M4s. Nice. And some, yeah, love that. Some mistakes, I think, in this round or some some added aggression from the Astralis team that maybe we're not so used to seeing. So, I mean, obviously some of these deagle shots are really cool, so I don't want to take that away from them, but definitely Astralis getting caught off guard a little bit in this round. I think their hand was forced into some aggression just because they'd gotten a couple players picked off, right? And they're trying to recover the scenario, recover the round. Heads shaking on the Estrella side. No time for that just yet. Elimination game at the I Am Cologne play-ins. Winner of the series heads to the group stage. Loser gets sent home. So much on the line, right? The Astralis team in terms of the legacy, for big in terms of the home crowd and, yeah. and doing a lot here. Yeah. What a tough game to have early on in the tournament. Ooh. Either way, it's going to be heartbreaking. Sisson, the takedown finally goes on a mission to try and see if he could break off that outside push, but um, never even was coming. Sisson just ready and waiting. Sip, though, going to be catching Tizian. If he doesn't get that kill, the round is probably over almost immediately, so that's a huge one. Good equalizing kill up on top of the hut. Config's out in the open. He's going to tuck himself over towards Silos. Oh, no, he's not. He's going to play the off angle between both choke points. Glaive up on the top could help, but Config's the first contact, and that makes it very difficult. They know the position, and Blame F arrives just at the nick of time. Searson, one minute for a 1v2. Sip sneaking out, not even firing that gun on the, on the ladder, wants to be sure. Zip just has a... Uh, He's, I can't imagine Zivix has ever thought of going for a knife. Probably not. It's just not in, just not in him, is it? <laughs> no. Well, that is a good recovery. This could have been a, a pretty brutal round. Even in this fight right here, it's not really clear until Blamef shows up exactly who's going to yeah. be coming out on top. So Yeah, that wasn't exactly the cleanest setup between Glaive and Config on top of the hut and back along that wall. I mean, kind of a cool idea, but it, kind of hard because, you know, Glaive doesn't want to play all the way peeking down to the doorway because you can actually be fought where Config can't see it. Upper rush happening. Grimbo's going to lead the way, but Tizian's going to get the first kill. Yeah, this is a problem. Glaive going to get run down. Everybody was blind in that. I don't think anyone could have seen anything. Tizian almost caught with the yeah, with the nade throw there, but he's going to be able to stay alive a little bit longer. Bomb. Did they get that bomb hunt down? Yeah, a little bit delayed. Thought they were going for it right away, but I guess they were worried about a potential rush coming through. Molotov already thrown off on Blamef. There's another one on Sip and a Flash and an HE, and that's all they have to try and go for the retake with. But with Keto down below, what do you even do? He is one step away from getting this kill on Farlik, and then there's no more retake happening. And this is his time. He wants to sneak up. But oh no, he's on the ladder. He still gets it. Oh, that bullet went everywhere. But it's another flank coming through. A Tabsim will take down one, and Sip has got no chance now. Low on health.
No more nades. Oh, he finds the kill on Keto, but doesn't matter. It's going to be a 13th round for Big. What a rush. They, I mean, they, so, never mind that they had an incredible first half, but in the second half, they're, they're taking rounds away from Astralis that are just painful. Well, do you want to know why they're painful? The only two rounds that Big has won, this one here with the Tech 9 rush and the previous one with the Deagles. And if you're Astralis right now, we saw the face of Config after they lost that Deagle round. You're now sitting in a world where you're like, man, our defensive side has been fine outside of the fact that we can't beat against these pistols, these low economy buys for whatever reason. And as a team and as a player, that is going to be eternally frustrating that this comeback seems so doable except you're dropping silly rounds that you that you shouldn't be yeah where you have such an advantage yeah i mean and it, it, that will be even more painful to go back and look over and review in the future for astralis to go back and check this here's a here's a compare and contrast mission for somebody go back and look at the round where keto was on the hut and they try to throw flashbangs in versus this round with the flashes just to just to do but everyone was flashed now including the big players to admittedly but still that's probably worth it if you're trying to spread out to the you know floor of the bomb side like that yeah no problems right b stream update as well vitality dropping a very uh very rough series last night against movistar riders and now going up against sprout who are having them have have their number at the moment in overtime 17 15. so if that's your jam if you like seeing uh you know I was going to say French players lose, but there's there's a lot of Danish players there as well. What are we doing right now? Everyone on the old Astralis team is having a rough event. Pro tip for everyone, you can keep two tabs open. If you're in Chrome, it might sure. require a couple of thousand gigabytes, but still, you can do it. Here we go. Wall outside. Harlig on a Deagle, MP9 on Glaive. This is the round here. If they lose this one, Astralis... They are, uh, they're almost out of nuke. Opening kill provided by Zipix. They've put Farleg towards ramp room with the Deagle. They want that M4 to be mobile and be able to move around the map. When this smoke clears, a little bit of a challenge for Farleg with Tizian and his AK-47. Luckily, Farleg just drops down, concedes control of ramp room. The rest of Big moving down secret. Good jump off position to be in here for the big side, but they still need an opening. There's one on Sip. Now they're gonna try and crunch it here. Config just turns the corner and they're not aware of it yet. Glaive on the other side as well, taking down Tizzy, and this is not a bad defense at all right now. Config nearly getting that one. Kato surviving on just 20 health. 25 seconds, and they're gonna go for a bomb plant, assisted by that Molotov to make sure they couldn't really get through on that side. So this might be something. Krimbo trying to reposition. And coming in on the other angle is Blame F. No kit currently picked up. Don't know if there's one on the ground somewhere, but I kind of doubt it. And they don't have a smoke either, so they need to be a little bit swift with this one. Crimbo oh. just aiming away at the wrong time, and it leaves Keto, who is low on health already on that ramp. He's very exposed, especially from behind, but he's gonna get the shot, and Blame F swings immediately. And there's gonna be enough time for that defuse as well, but man, scary round. Down into that one versus one, they almost had it lost. Blame F even just ran right by that kit as well, which could have been uh, relatively frightening. Yeah, don't want to, don't want to miss that. Oh, he's going to be so frustrated. Player behind Silo in the 2v2. Grimbo just looked away. He was watching that for so, so long, and he just peeked up to check the right side of ramp to make sure his teammate was going to be covered and gets punished for it. Good clutch from Blame F. 13 to 9. Astralis still in the fight. Still four rounds back. Nice thing for them is, I mean, outside outside of the the eco rounds, they've they've been doing just fine. Op is back in the hands of Searson, so another low buy round next if if Astralis is to is to win this one. Yeah, you're right. I mean, on some level, if they can stop losing to the to the weird eco rounds, they actually are doing decently on this map. But on the other hand, if they lose the map and maybe the series overall partly to the map then it's it's, it's going to be so much more heartbreaking i love that peak from tapson but somehow blame if able to adjust in time surviving on seven health sip gonna just take a peek and fall back does not want to stick around for the fight big's been able to get ramp room control quite consistently by losing the player outside really hard for them to actually connect things to utilize it to attack the lower bomb site so back towards upper we go a minute on the clock they could try and head all the way back outside if they wanted to. They have the time for it. I think the one problem they have is the utility for it. They only have the one smoke. Searson's just hoping and praying that Astralis is going to call for a lobby crunch. 
Yeah, look at where Keto is positioned. He's hoping that someone's going to be retaking this part of the map, which is actually a pretty good bet. I like that idea. Sometimes you can, if you can wedge a T player in somewhere deep on the map and, and have the CTs walk right into it, that would be huge. But eventually, he too will have to make a move. Let's see. Crimbo trying to open up through mini. So much map control here. This is so unusual that you can just walk in here on the T side. But he is all the way in there. Sis and taking down Glaive. They didn't check the corner though. And Config is still here. Comes out swinging. We're a big double. And finally catching Keto means Sisson is on his own with, um, yeah, nothing left to do. That, I'm again, they take ramp room. They get Crimbo into the middle. So much map space for Big to move around in that if not for that kind of a double kill for Config, yeah, they're they're right in position to sweep away the round in, in a matter of seconds. Config wins that round, and, and just I mean he's getting a little bit overshadowed by you know the performance of Keto with 20 kills, Krimbo with 25 kills, and the excellent first half that Big had. But Config has been here throughout the game, 23 kills now, an all important double kill as well. Searson even gets what he was looking for, that push in towards Hut when they start moving into the upper bomb site. Searson's able to find this kill on the Glaive. He's trying to find some standing in lobby, but this is the double kill that changed the round. That was everything. Farlick had a pretty tough task there, too, keeping his eye on both ramp room and on outside throughout the entirety of the round. Timeout is called by Big. And you know, if Config goes down and is traded in there, Farlick, when he comes in, like maybe he still checks towards, towards ramp, but he's going to be in a lot more of a hurry to try and get up the ladder, and then maybe he gets caught by Tizian, right. I believe, instead. So a lot of things could have gone wrong, but 13 to 10 keep thinking back to those awkward pistol rounds that, or the eco rounds that Astralis managed to throw away. Yeah. I mean, this is... They're probably still thinking about that too, to a certain degree. Yeah, it could have been, well, it could have been at least something like, a, 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 you know, a, a 12 to 11 type scoreline actually in favor of Astralis all of a sudden. Maybe more because it's possible the big would have saved even another round beyond that. So here we go, Deagles. Some pistols behind, and the AWB that was saved by Searson. Yeah, and we'll see if that can break the curse. If the fact that they have an op means Big can actually win one of these low buy rounds. Astralis has struggled against these, and now you've got an op to aggressively peek for an opening kill. And this is where, again, there seems to just be two different versions of Searson, but I want the one that knows that he has the mechanical skill and the speed to swing for some of these fights. Even if it's, even if some of them are low percentage, I just feel like when he's good, he is so fast. Yeah, they're gonna, it looks like they almost wanna set up a run boost here. I would even be okay with that. Anything to put him into the fight. Yeah, I guess the other philosophy is let the Deagles take the contact and have the op Ooh, find maybe the follow-up kill. Keto trades Blame F off. The pocket op better than the actual op, and that's an awkward unscope for Farlick. Drops down. Bomb is on the ground. It's picked up. That's a second kill for Farlick. The Danish sniper doing work in round 24, but Tizian has found access to secret. Two versus three. The pressure is... I feel like now the pressure is on everybody here. Ooh. Through the window, headshot to bring him down, and he's going to keep going. There he is. It was an emergency, and he did break the glass, Jason. Nice. Didn't didn't deflect the bullet anywhere as well. That glass has saved a lot of people over the years. <laughs> he really has. 13 to 11, two rounds spread between the teams. Nice four kill round from Farlig with the AWP. Finally, Astralis get over the hump of dealing with pistols. I think I I've caught myself earlier saying that I, you know, between Searson and Farley, I'd pick Searson any day in terms of impact, but it's kind of been the opposite right now. Farley has actually been having a lot to say with that AWP. So that's cool. That's a huge benefit to Astralis at the moment at a 13 to 11 scoreline. I think, yeah, well, I think the, the big one at the moment, uh, Config with his 23 kills has been great. If he keeps that up throughout this, there's, there, I mean, this comeback, even with the two kind of stub toes of losing, losing against Tech Nines, losing against Deagles, still have a great chance. That uh, timeout has turned into a, a technical pause as a PC froze. It's a classic. Yeah? Yeah. Not, uh, not the most exciting tank timeout, but usually something that can be fixed really quickly. So I guess we appreciate it anyway. As we said the other day, or maybe the other week, exploding hand warmers is a good one. Yeah, that's that's a good one. It's a classic. Time for uh, Glaive as well. Stock up on that potassium. Yeah, have a banana. He has that. He has that on call on the ground right next to him. He's ready to pick it up whenever. And what if he runs it over with the chair though? Ooh, banana in the wheels. <sighs> yeah, you don't like that. I've played Mario Kart. That's not where you want to go. 
You are, in fact, a Mario Kart champion, I might say. I've seen grown men cry in green rooms. <laughs> Lot of confidence going in, none coming none out. None coming out. That's what I do. 13 to 11. Don't let the joyful, cheerful elevator music fool you. Everything on the line for these two teams. We're back into things. Round 25, Alpen Farlig. Still not enough money for Big to put together a full-blown buy, so once again, Astralis has got to deal with a few upgraded pistols. Two Tech 9s on Tapson and Crimbo, Mac 10 on Tizian, and an AK on Keto. Ooh, here we go, rush towards the AWP. This could actually work. Gonna get the one kill Farley, but he's slowed down. Molotov behind him, they know they have oh. him. Oh, a no scope, he's back yes. for more. Farley taking three with him into the grave. That is such a massive defense. The pressure, unmitigated pressure coming in from the big side, and he's like, okay, if you're gonna keep going, then let's fight. Seven kills in two rounds, and that one is a heroic performance because they were gonna run him down. You're right, that one bullet just tags him. He's so slow on the drop, and he realizes he's not getting away. He comes back for more, and then he knows he's gonna get one more. Good shooting, and obviously buys time for Config to swing out, and added a couple more tallies to his kill total. Back-to-back <laughs> -back wins against upgraded pistols and small buys. Imagine being a Astralis and living through that first half with both Sip and Glaive for the longest time at like 07, 09. Glaive got three kills. Glaive had zero kills up until round 15, and then he yeah. wins a one versus three. And imagine how big that is. I always talk about that's one of my favorite, favorite aspects of players, guys who can have horrendous halves like that and still find a way to have an impact on the game. And that clutch was monumental. Well, and, you, and one thing is doing it in a random online game, but this is qualifying for the group stage of Cologne. If you get knocked out here, it's devastating to absolutely everyone on either side. So that's where the pressure is on. You're not going to get many chances to train your comeback skills at this level. You just won't. Tizian on the other side, though. Farley here sneaking up. The bomb is actually back there. So we know at some point, somewhere, someone's going to have to go back and pick that up. And that might be trouble if Farley can keep his position. Four versus five still. As Keto goes down, a big target to bring down at the start of this round. Yeah, and smoke up the door as well. Is Glaive gonna push into this? Oh yeah, they're setting up a lobby crunch. Oh, Farlig's gonna have one more. How fantastic has he been? Right when you brought up the Searson versus Farlig concept, the idea, the conversation we had earlier, he has delivered. Blame F is now gonna scoot out of CT spawn to get involved in the action. Spots the jump around the corner. I don't think Big know where they want to go just yet. Good pick for Searson outside, and now the upper bomb site is exposed. It's Config again, who's called upon, and same with Farley. These two are delivering Astralis forward, and it's a 1v3 for Tapson. Tapson, though, do not astralis. Oh, the time, that's the problem. He can't, he can't even fight. If he had a little bit more time, this would have been doable. Maybe five more seconds, maybe he could have taken the fight and then gone for it, but he had to run straight there with the bomb out. That is so... Annoying. Otherwise, that would have been a cool attempt there. I've got to say, blame if That made no sense to me at all. He throws the smoke. Maybe that's fine. Although I actually thought he would underhand it to throw just to just to make himself an impossible target to find. But he throws it, and he just runs before the smoke is even up. He just gets taken down. I, I think he thought that that was just going to be like a lurker AK-47. I don't think in his brain that he thought Searson would be out there with the AWP, oh. and obviously, it's a little picked off. Yeah, that could have been uncomfortable. There's that frustration from Blame F, as you saw, but no worries. Config and Farlig have stepped up. I think Farlig in, what, the past three rounds is now up to nine kills, maybe ten kills total in three rounds. Would it be possible to make, like, a script or a bind or a macro or something that disables the, the mouse wheel when you're shooting? Or the... the you know, I'm not the I'm not the person to ask that question. My expertise does not lie in, in that area. I feel like you could save a lot of Counter-Strike players if you did that. I feel like someone would have done it if it was possible. Yeah, maybe. But they said that about Velcro. Here we go, 13-13. Crimbo's gonna drop on top of Mini. Blame F is going to have heard that. He'll be prepared, but what? not for that shot. Straight to the dome, Zipix shuts down the ramp play, and Tizian continues moving forward. Out of the timeout, Big is aggressive. Oh, I love this play. Such confidence on the side of Krimbo. He knew probably he was getting hurt as well, but did not care. Farlix taking down Tizian, though. Fight's not over. They're straight in there. Flashes everywhere. I don't even think they realize Sip is down below. Farlix gets one more kill. Krimbo in the corner, and now it's a one-on-one, -on -one, but catching him mid-air. What a round from Krimbo. Ends up with a triple at the end. That is absolutely wild. 
Yeah, and there's so much chaos going on in that round. There's no way for that communication to come across fast enough for Farley to really process it and really be ready for that fight. This is that spectacular entry, hard shot to hit. This is the insanity. Krimbo comes unblind. Zipix never checked the corner. Even if he'd done the damage, Farlick might have just cratered at a big win. Tell me that's not criminal, Jason. Back to that old chestnut. Wild. I can't believe it. 14-13. They needed this round so badly. That's big. the first gun round they've won in the second half. Yeah, you're right. And this is this map is slipping out of the hands of Big right now. They had such a grasp on it. It was almost already won. And now, yeah, they're, they're losing their grip. So this one round and having somebody like Krimbo again, we're not talking about someone with all the experience in the world, you know, and he's playing like that doesn't matter right now. Yeah, he's delivering some very, very good, a very good performance. 28 kills in this map so far, leading the server. Farlick has shot up there, though. Another spectacular round for him in a loss. Let's hope that doesn't ruin his game. Blame F, you want to talk about aggressive and assertive. He's going for three. Okay, well, see you next round, I guess. <laughs> what a knockout punch to just take all the wind out of your sails if you're big as well. You just, you get that nice big, that huge impactful wind, call the timeout, and nothing to be happy about here. Money's gone. Money's gone for Astralis to get to 15. Huge, isn't it? Not even a chance. You called that, and you could tell they were not prepared. There's an orb waiting there, but the rest of them are setting up grenades in the back. They're sort of ready to, to throw some, some smoke walls out here. Definitely not prepared for what was coming their way. Blame F deep up there in Farlik because the elevated position over by the garage, able to see all the way up. So. 14-14, tied up, and like you said, the money not looking good at all for Big Oh no, this is, this is a disaster. Yeah, it's horrifying. And they've used all timeouts, right? They, they just used their fourth in the previous round, just leading up into the Blame F disaster. So you can't even really talk things over or get any extra time to get to everyone on the same page. However, they have won two of these. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Seems to do better with the Deagles than without them. Astralis on the other side. The longer this goes, the more people seem to be joining the top here, right? Convic and, and Farlik have been paving the way for the rest of the team to try to get warmed up. And slowly but surely, Sip and Blame F started to get up there. Glaive not that far behind either, so they're, they're sort of starting to wake up, even if it's a very, very late beginning here for Astralis in his best of three. Keto's going to be going down to begin. Convic's been the constant, though, throughout this map for Astralis. Yeah. Triple in the pistol round, and they just really never let go from there. Classic config type game. Look at who snuck down below. Tabson would love to find someone. He's got the Tech 9 door. You can see right through with that hole in it. And not a lot of pressure here. Molotov might add a little bit of pressure, though. That's unfortunate, but the smoke able to save him. And he's even ready. Just, you might say, well, why even fight this one config? You're five versus three. You're low on health. You don't actually have to, but he just doesn't. He doesn't always register that kind of a thing. Ooh, Zipix is about to get wrecked. Free. Oh, the hole. There we go. All right. Thank God for that one. Farlick misses a chance, but as you mentioned, Config with low HP, Glaive's low as well. There's an opportunity here. Yeah, now Config, he doesn't want to go back for that, but he hesitates for a second. Oh no, they can't plan. They can't plan. Everyone just bail out. Let him, let him chill. But kill him after the time, and that's huge. Oh no, he's got no money. Searson stuck on 2,900. That was perhaps the best outcome for Astralis. Yeah, it truly was. And no bomb plant, they don't get the extra cash, and obviously, oh, what a devastating way to go. Sip almost with the perfect camouflage there. <laughs> Lily looked like Tamsin had not seen him. Oh, man. Talk about a, what a brutal game, what a brutal map to start with here for a series that's gonna qualify one team and knock the other one out. And no matter which gets to, gets to leave here, it's going to be heartbreaking for Astralis. It'll be an absolute low point for a team that has a lot of expectations. It might be, might be a finishing blow. Might almost be a finishing blow. I don't disagree. And for Big, it'll be denying them a chance to play in front of the home crowd, which no doubt they'll want to and certainly have the skill to. That's the other thing. There's no doubt that Big are a dangerous team, but right here, opening map in this best of three, and it is... It's going to take everything everyone has. Yeah. 
Big looking for overtime and a half where their T side has let them down. This has not been a great attacking half. Zipix with one kill. He can just back away. That's his job done for the moment. Keto's going to start wrapping around towards heaven. Blame F, it's his job to keep an eye on this. And he will do that indeed. Tapping away. They never knew he was in big garage. Keto goes down for free. Krimbo's going to look left. Blame F is right. And Blame F has another. Yeah, he moved into the perfect position. Even the flashbang was good, but they just couldn't really capitalize on it too early. Two versus oh five Lord. here. Glaive, yeah, they've managed to walk past him, but that's that's a small kill in the grand scheme of things. 35 no. seconds. Backstab. Yeah, they're starting to get there. Maybe if Searson can get this one, they have a shot. Oh, but Farley <laughs> spins around and Searson just closed on that ladder. Tizzy and all on his own. He's going to be found. It's Config fittingly with a final kill and a 16 to 14 win on Nuke for Astralis after an absolutely worthless first half yeah config did a lot of work but you got to give shout outs to farley who stepped up when it mattered most his impact during a three round stretch was magnificent and that's astralis taking the opening map in this deciding series we're headed to a break we're gonna have the desk break it all down and then we're sending one of these teams home